Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabi ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and that. So today we're going to talk about the conditions for prayer. And the conditions for prayer, we have six that we're going to mention. Six conditions for prayer. Six conditions for the salat. And the six conditions means the condition is that what you have to have before the worship and during the worship. It has to be there. For example, the first one, which is Tahara, it's purification. So that means you have to make purification before you pray, and your purification has to continue during your Salat, during your worship. So you cannot pray unless you have Tahara. And the, as we mentioned, the Hadith, or those things which are impurities, for example, going to the restroom or passing gas, that you have to have wudu after that if you're going to pray. So that's what we mean by hadith. Tahara min hadith, meaning you have to purify yourself from hadith. You know, from hadith is urinating, defecating, and going to the toilet, number two or passing gas. All of that is called hadith in the Arabic. Okay? And so the first condition for your salat is that you have purification from uh, you, you have wudu or you have purification from hadith, from, have, from impurities. And this is related to the hadith. The evidence for this is the Prophet Sallallahu said, لا يقبل الله صلاة أحدكم إذا إذا حدث أو إذا أحدث حتى يتوضأ. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah does not accept the prayer of the one who had impurity until they make wudu. So can you pray without wudu? Okay, good. What if you have to go to the bathroom really bad, you go to the bathroom, and then you pray afterwards? Can you do that? Until what? Until you make wudu in a meal. Excellent. So that's the first condition for salat is wudu. That you have to have wudu. You have to have purification. And if you have the big hadith of akbar, you have to have ghusl. We'll talk about that another time. But anyway, you have to have purification. And that's the evidence from the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah. The second condition is the time. The second condition for Salat is you have to pray Salat during its time. You can't pray, pray like now, we just prayed Maghrib. You can't pray uh, Fajr now. And you can't pray Bhur. And you can't pray Asa. No. Now is the time for Maghrib. Maghrib came in, and we have to pray Maghrib during the time. So we can't pray one Salat during the time of another Salat. And the times of the five prayers are, the, uh, the first time that the scholars mention is Zohar. During Zohar, it is the time from when the sun passes its zenith, so the sun is in the uh, middle of the sky, until the length of, the, of an object shadow is equal to the true length of that object. Which means that if you wanted to know what time Bhuvra is and you didn't have a clock or something, if you took an object like a stick and after the sun is reached in the middle of the sky, if you look up in the middle sky, it's a little hard, some places you can't really see that very clear, but this is just to give you an idea if you didn't have uh, a watch. And the sun was shining and you have a shadow. You have a shadow of the object. Your normal shadow, say if your normal shadow comes right here, only to there, when that shadow is past this, this normal place and the length of that object, that stick, then that means that is the end of the time for Boa. When it gets when the object, say if the object was a stick, and your shadow of that stick is the same length as the stick, after its normal shadow, then that means Bohr is over. That was the last walk, the last time for Bohr. So that is the time for Bohr. 
And the time for Asr is the time from when the length of an object's shadow is equal to the true length of that object until sunset. So that time when I told you that the shadow is the same as the object, then that means that it's Asr. It's Salat of Asr time. You can pray Asr then. Up until the sunset. When the sun sets, no. The sun begins to set. The sun is setting. Then that's Maghrib. That's the beginning of Maghrib. So that means Salat doesn't... When we say the time for Salat, the time for Salat, a lot of times, uh, for example, for Bumur and things like this, it's not just one minute. It's not, oh, it's 12.30, it's Bumur left. It means that Bumur is until Salat or Asr. So that means you might have a couple of hours. Maybe you have two hours depending on where you are. Maybe it's three hours depending on the time of the year. So Bumur is from the beginning of that time until, as we mentioned, the beginning of the time for Salat al-Asr. And Salat al-Asr is from the beginning of that time of Salat al-Asr, that you see those signs that we said, the shadow is the same length as its object, until when the sun begins to set. That means Asr is over. When the sun is starting to set, that means Maghrib is, is coming in. So that means Salat al-Maghrib. Maghrib is the time from the sunset until the redness in the sky disappears. So if you can see a place, if you're in a place where you can see uh, the sun setting, and you see the redness, when it becomes red, when that redness disappears, that means Maghrib is, uh, that, uh, uh, Maghrib is over. That's the time when Maghrib is over. And then Salat that means when Maghrib is over, that's the beginning of Salat Risha. That's the beginning of what? No. After which? After which Salat? Isha is after what Salat? What did you say? Huh? Isha is after what Salat? What Salat is before Salat Risha? Mother. Good. Mm-hmm. So good. And then... Salat al-Isha, it is the time from when the redness in the sky disappears. So that redness is gone. Until the middle of the night. The very middle of the night, that is the whole time for Isha. So Isha, you may have s several hours. It's not just 30 minutes or one hour. But Isha, usually, is it's, uh, it's from the, when the redness of the sky disappears up until the middle of the night, when the night is halfway through, halfway to the morning. And then Fajr, it is the time from the dawn until the sun rises, until sunrise. That is the time of Fajr. Okay, and the, and the scholars, they speak more, but that's sufficient for us just to know on a, a, a very basic level on the times for the prayer. So that is the second condition. The first condition we said is that you have purification from your habit, you know, and the second condition is that you pray Salat in the time. You can't pray Dhuhr during the time of Fajr. You can't pray Fajr in the time of Isha, etc. You have to pray the Salat in its time. The third condition, Sitr al-Awwa, the third condition is that you cover yourself for the prayer. That, that whatever the clothing that you wear for the boys and the men is they have to, their, their, their aura is between their, a little below their knee up until their belly button, over their belly button. Okay? That's the aura of the men. But for the Salat, they should also cover their shoulders. Okay? They should also cover their shoulders. And for the women, they should cover everything except their hands and their face. Okay? For the Salat, they should have their, uh, everything should be covered except their hands and their face. And this is for the women. Okay, so when you're praying, if you're for for girls, you have to cover everything except 
what? And the mashallah intact. So you cover everything except your hands and your face. Good. And so that's what it means to sit our own is that a person has to cover their, their, the, the parts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered them to cover and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has ordered them to cover. And this is very important and there's different conditions. Sometimes maybe a person doesn't have a fold, have, have clothing to, to cover themselves with. Those are different uh, situations. And now is not the time to speak about it, but we just want to know the general conditions that they have to cover themselves when they pray. So the first thing, again, is that you have to be pure from uh, hadith. You have to pray salat during this time. And the third one is to cover yourself. Good. Sit al awwal. The fourth thing is that you have to have tahara min najasati fi bedanihi wa thobihi so, the fourth condition for the prayer is that a person has to have pray in a pure place that has no najasa. And their body should have no najasa on them, and their soul should have no najasa, meaning their clothing. The place they're going to pray should be clean, their clothing should be clean, and the their body should be clean. That's the fourth condition. So, for example, a person, uh, Alhamdulillah, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the earth a masjid for his ummah. So that meaning that we can pray almost any place, a Muslim can pray almost any place that's clean and doesn't have uh, you know, you can't pray on a grave, you can't pray, um, you know, in places where there's shirk necessarily, but you can pray as long as the place is clean. If you have to pray on the dirt, it's okay. You pray on the mud if you have to, it's okay, it's clean. Okay? As long as there's no najasa, that means there's nothing from the animals, no, from animals that we can't eat. For example, you can't eat pig, you can't eat pork. So if there's pork, the pigs live there. You can't pray in that place. You can't pray in a pig pen. You can't pray in a place where the dogs, there's dogs uh, there, that they're, they're, that's their place where they live, that, they, that they're using the bathroom there. And so forth. You can't pray there. You have to pray in a place where it's clean to pray in, where there's no najasa. And also, any najasa that you see, anything that is impure, then you don't pray there. So if you find... Uh, that people use the bathroom there, or animal uses the bathroom there, or anything, then you don't pray there. Okay? And also your thobe. If your thobe, your clothing has najasa, if it has some, some stuff, maybe you were holding a baby, and, and you forgot, and you, 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 you should clean your, your abaya, or clean your thobe, or whatever you're wearing, before you pray. You should wash it, uh, wash it with water to wash out the najasa. Okay? And also, you can't pray in the bathroom. You can't pray uh, in a grave, uh, on a grave or a place where they bury the dead people. You can't pray in a place where people wash themselves. They make a hustle, you know. And you can't pray also in the place where the candles are, where they hold candles. You can't pray there neither. Because there's a Hadith of the Prophet where he mentioned that uh, not to to pray there. But he said, if you want, you can pray where goats are. Because goats, we can eat them. So they're najat, they're, um, not the, it's not najat. Their bathroom, when they go to the bathroom, it's not considered najat. It's something we don't want. It's, it's not clean, but it's not impure. Meaning, if the goat if there's goat dung there, meaning that the goat is did number two there, you can still pray there. You can still pray there. Why? Because what the goat, because we can eat the goat, and his 
bathroom stuff is not considered najasa. It's not najis. But, yeah, but the camel, as we mentioned, the camel specifically is mentioned in a hadith. So since there's a nafs, since there is evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah that we can't pray in the place where the camel, then we can't pray in the camel, in the, pla in the place where, where the camel is. Now, No, nah, good. So the camel's meat, and that, that also, the scholars, they say that that's a reason. So when we eat the camel's meat, then this is one of the things that breaks our wudu. And that's in accordance. The only way we know that is because the Prophet said that in an authentic hadith. Because it's a, a sound hadith narration that the Prophet said that uh, we have to make wudu from the camel's meat. And he said, and if you want to, you can make it from the sheep or the goat's meat. If you want, but that means you don't have to. But the camel's meat, according to the Sahih, is uh, a racial Okay. So again, that was the fourth thing. So again, we have to we have to be pure from the head of name, from using the bathroom. We have to make a move from before Salat. We also the second thing we have to pray in the time. The third thing is we have to cover ourselves. And the fourth thing is that we have uh, that our clothing and our place we pray in and our body is clean. No najata. Okay? The fifth thing is that we mentioned this before is that we have to face the Qibla. So we can't pray going this way. We can't pray going this way. We can't pray going that way. We have to pray facing Mecca. Facing, and if we are in Mecca, we have to pray and we can see the Kaaba, we have to pray specifically facing the Kaaba. So this is part of a Muslim's prayer, this is the fifth condition, is that a Muslim has to pray facing the Qibla, facing in the direction of Mecca. So if you're way in Canada, you're way in Ethiopia, you're way in another country, uh, when you pray, you have to face in the general direction of Mecca. But when you're in Mecca exactly, you have to pray uh, facing the Kaaba. If you can see the Kaaba, you have to spray exactly facing it. And inshallah, we'll go to Mecca soon, where you will be able to see the Kaaba and pray and make tawaf and everything. Isn't it about the sixth thing, the last thing, the last condition, which actually, even though according to this book it's mentioned as the sixth, but it's really almost the first condition, which is very important, as we mentioned for all of our ibadah, is you have to have niya. You have to have intention. You have to have your intention for your salat. That's the sixth thing. Very, very important. And what this means is that when you make salat, your intention, of course, is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's for that specific prayer. It means that if you pray fajr, what distinguishes a lot of the prayers from each other is your niyyah, your intention. So, for example, when it's time for Fajr prayer, you have to have a niyyah to pray Fajr. Salah. If you pray Zuhr, what niyyah should you have? Your niyyah should be to pray what, Salah? Huh? To pray Salah to Zuhr. No. So your intention should be to pray that prayer that you're going to pray. If you're going to pray Asr, you have to have the Niya for Asr. If you're going to pray Maghrib, you have to have the Niya for Maghrib. Because Zuhr and Asr, they are similar. They're both for Rakat. And they both, you pray quiet, silently, according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. So they resemble each other. So you can't pray uh, Salat Asr and then say, and have your Niya for Zuhr. No. You have to have the correct Niya for the salat you're going to pray. And we will end there, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who hold on to the son of the Prophet sallallahu and say righteous words and do those things which please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.